So this is going to be my video about uh, charging batteries with solar and going into discharging and battery characteristics and stuff like that. Some of this stuff is really going to surprise you. Uh, I'll be honest, it was one of my biggest learning curves. And uh, just real quick on a wall mounted pen. If you penetrate a wall, you want to use a drip loop and that way the water is going to drop off there and uh, not go in your house. Anyway. Uh, I'm going to do my best to uh, get this information across because it was confusing to me and I'm sure it's going to be confusing to everybody else. Alright, there are going to be lots of parts to this video because I'm just going to try to keep my head straight. Uh, right now uh, the 12 volt battery bank is in float and um, I'll go into that and then I'm going to go into a few other things. Uh, this one here is not really charging batteries, this one's grid tied. Alright, so I got the 24 volt bank rolled out and uh, I'm just going to go with the 12 volt bank and uh, this is AGMs and uh, it's basically all the same except for equalizing and uh, this is where I can't stress enough uh, big cabling. I mean, uh, and there's a number of reasons for that. So the biggest reason for uh, large cabling is uh, what would be called line loss. Uh, losing voltage as you go through the bank and that's one of the reasons I uh, pull the uh, positive off one side negative off the other but if your cables are too small uh, your bank can become imbalanced and uh, that's like one of the biggest reasons to equalize your batteries but uh, charging them up is the most important now these old style chargers uh, be honest with you they don't know how to charge a battery properly uh, especially for solar where some of your new high-tech uh, digital or solid-state battery chargers do know how to do it but uh, one of the problems, you charge a really big battery bank with these things, they're going to give up. They're going to assume the batteries are bad and uh, they're going to quit. Now my feelings are you always need an alternative way to charge your batteries and uh, usually that would be generator, things like that. Um, but uh, this battery charger does know how to do it. It does it perfectly and in fact it's specifically designed for an AGM battery bank. And uh, I'll try to get into some of the charging parameters now. Also, your charge controllers know how to do it when they're programmed correct. So if your solar can't keep up uh, using your car, especially on a 12-volt system, is uh, the best way to go. Uh, and these diesel vehicles have huge alternators, even in my little Volkswagen. Now the quickest way to kill your battery bank uh, would be to uh, discharge it and then uh, leave it discharged. Because uh, your plate's going to change from lead oxide to lead sulfate. And if they sit like that long enough, the uh, sulfate it will uh, remain on the plates even though you charge it back up and uh, you will never be able to recover uh, the damage that was done. So charging is really important. Uh, now I'm going to just give you some of the numbers, um, you know, to try to save some of the com confusion here. Uh, the easiest way to do it is if you haven't charged or discharged your batteries, I mean nothing's going on, they're just sitting there. Uh, and you were to measure the voltage across them, it's going to be around 12.7 volts. And uh, obviously if you're doing 24, you're going to double that. And if you're doing 48, you're going to triple that or quadruple that, I'm sorry. Um, that's one of the biggest ones. And uh, let me get into some of the other ones. Alright, so once again, these numbers are, uh, you know, with no, no charging and no discharging. So at 80% state of charge, you should have around 12.5 volts. 60% state of charge, you should have around 12.2 volts. 40% state of charge, you should have 11.9 uh, volts. And 20% charge, you should have around 11.6. And pretty much anything that's uh, below 11.5 to 11 volts is uh, pretty much uh, getting close to being a dead battery. Now, I'm not really going to go into any specifics here, but uh, the temperature of your battery bank. Uh, greatly changes what it will do. Uh, a battery bank say around freezing or zero degrees will only put out about half the amount of energy that it would around 70 degrees and it also goes the opposite direction as soon as it gets super hot uh, you lose a lot of your uh, capacity as well but uh, nothing like the cold that's why uh, batteries pretty much like the same temperature we do. And these yellow cables are actually coming from my charge controllers so it, uh, it actually compensates for all that. It changes all the charging parameters depending on the temperature of the batteries. And also the outback converter uh, has a temperature sensor as well. So it actually knows how to charge the batteries too. 
And one of the things I push the hardest and uh, one of the biggest misconceptions is uh, 60 amps out for an hour does not mean 60 amps in for an hour. You actually have to put 30% more in than you took out. And that's always. So I really can't push it hard enough how important it is to be able to charge your batteries. I'm going to plug this charger in. Uh, this is a fully charged bank so you can see how quick it dropped. And it knows exactly what it's doing. But the voltage has climbed dramatically, and uh, that was one of the parts when I first did solar. I said, man, my voltage is climbing. These solar panels are really charging these things up. It really means nothing. You need to be able to take them up to a certain parameter, which on this I've got it set around 14.1. Holds it there for an hour uh, for an absorption, and then it's going to drop the, uh, the charge rate and try to hold it at 13.2, which is my float. So it's only been a matter of minutes and uh, this thing is basically going to go down to zero, which uh, kind of tells you it really knows what it's doing. Alright, so with lead acid batteries, there's pretty much uh, three parameters you're going to look at. It's, uh, you're going to have your bulk volts, your float volts, and your equalization charge. And uh, when you bulk batteries, you pretty much want to do what's called absorption, which means uh, you're going to hold them there for an hour. Uh, floating a battery, you pretty much want to hold that indefinitely if you can. Um, but obviously the sun's going to go down. But I do have this out of a charge controller book. I don't know if you're going to be able to read that or not. Um, but that pretty much has all your different batteries in it. Looks a little blurry to me. But uh, anyway, I'll uh, try to address uh, equalization anyway. Now for equalizing. Uh, equalizing can be, can be a pretty brutal project, or it seems that way anyway. But it's very, very important, especially if you have... Uh, you know, multiple battery bank. If you only have one battery, uh, you don't really have to equalize them. It's nice to get the cells equal, but uh, if you have a large battery bank, it's very important. Uh, on your uh, lead acid batteries, you want to take them to at least 15.5 volts for an hour, and you can expect a lot of gassing, um, and you want to be able to ventilate that out. Uh, the AGMs, uh, you do want to equalize those. Um, I've heard some different things about whether to do it or not to do it. Uh, I only equalize them for about a half hour. I just kind of try to turn up my charge parameters a little bit. So uh, I'm going to go over uh, just some of the review stuff and uh, some of the stuff I might have forgotten. Now an AGM battery is, uh, I wouldn't say it's superior to a lead acid battery. But at least you don't have to provide any ventilation for them. And um, lead acids are a little bit easier. You can diagnose them, you use the hydrometer, you can figure out the state of charge, things like that. Um, there's just a lot to it. And uh, let me uh, try to just review a couple things. And I personally think 12 volts is the way to go uh, just because of the friendliness of the components. You can get 12 volt chargers, you can get 12 volt light bulbs, you can get things to charge your phones. And, walkie-talkies and all that and you can use your car to charge your battery bank where a 24 volt sort of a isolated system yeah it does save uh, wire size but that's about it it's not any more efficient so I guess the point of this whole video is uh, I'd hate to see somebody invest some money in something they're gonna depend on an emergency because basically there's no other reason to have a battery bank other than anticipating emergency power outage and uh, and if they're not properly maintained, uh, they may not be there for you. They may turn the lights on, but they may give out pretty quickly. So uh, try to find, if your solar won't keep up, try to find out a, another way to charge them. That's why I like 12 volt. You can use your car, your 12 volt chargers all day long, where your 24 volts can be a little bit more difficult. So uh, anyway, I guess I'm just looking out for you. I hope I shared some information. I'm not sure if you guys got all that. Um, and I'm sure I didn't give all the information. I just really don't know how to do it. It was uh, one of the toughest learning curves for me. And um, I guess it's hard to, uh, to share the info. But uh, anyway, hope that helped. So you guys have a great night. See you next time.